Hello, everybody. We're back. It's Truth or Skepticism. I'm Tom Sosnoff. He is Dylan Radigan. How are you, Mr. Radigan? Pretty good. Pretty good. Never been better. Never been better. Never been better. That's a, you know, that's a big one. No, I think you're at any day that you're here, any day, any the present tense is the best moment in time, sir. So, okay, I'm I'm okay with that. The best moment I'll ever have is this one right here. Do you know a lot of people always say, you know, I wish I could go back in time. Do you ever wish you could go back in time? Yeah, me neither. I wish sometimes that I would, I, I wanted to be better at focusing on the each, I'm, I'm into the presence. And I think, especially as I get a little bit older, the presence takes on more value. Got it. Yeah, so, I'm, I'm, um... But I think your son is going to move to Italy, from what I can tell, unrelated to all this. My son is in love with a, uh, that city called Luca. I know. I know. Yeah. I might regret recommending it to him. Yeah. Do you know, I've been there. Really? Yes. I did not know that that was the walled city. Okay. Yeah. But I've been there. Except you can understand I, his appreciation? I can, but I was there with my wife, so um, I don't remember it as well. <laughs> like, it's like... I don't remember what we had going on then, but uh, I, don't, I don't remember. Um, but I'm good. I'm good. All right. Um, all right. So let's do it. Yeah, well, Bill, first of all, he's letting me use his place in L.A. while he's in Italy. You know, I'm, staying at, at your, I'm staying at Cole's place here in Los Angeles. Are you really? You are? That, no? Would, that would, no, I'm not. That would have been funny, though, if I actually was oh. like, you took my place in Italy, I'll take your place. And I'll be like a house swamp. Yeah. Uh, you know. Yeah. So anyway, we got a Federal Reserve situation on our hands. We got a bank crisis on our hands. We yeah. got a little liberation on our hands. We got all these things on our hands. I've yeah. become a little bit bored with them, quite honestly. Um, it's very easy to become bored with the... Um, uh, extremely easy to become bored with the bank situation because I think it is, um, I mean, in a nutshell, it's 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 grossly overstated, and um, you know, I mean, and misunderstood. It's just the whole thing's a pile of and it's like what it's a waste of your lifetime to use any of your energy thinking about it. As far as I can um, tell, you know, the the whole problem with the the. The whole issue with the bank crisis, in my opinion, is just that it's um, it's self-inflicted. It's it's not it's not systemic. There's nothing, you know. I, I know. That's why it's boring. That's right. That's why it is boring. I mean, you know, um, some fraud, fraud sometimes is a little more interesting, like FTX, the whole FTX thing. Sure, yeah, that's like a scheme. And, yeah. you know, it's, yeah, it's like a murder mystery. Yeah. You know, you know, um, you know, stupidity is far more interesting than, you know, um, I mean, I mean, stupidity is far less interesting than yeah. than yeah. criminal stupidity is the least interesting. Right. Right. Like you're not impressed, right. you know, like dumb criminal stuff, you know, dumb criminal stuff, whether it's some guy trying to rip an ATM out of the, you know, out of the wall or, or somebody. Or, no, no, they, it's, if you're going to issue mortgages at two point eight percent fixed and not hedge it. When the whatever, short, you know, whatever it like, is, it's, it's not it's like it's, 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 it's hard to generate any interest. Yeah, I, I, I've been saying you can't teach stupid, you know, like if you can't take a deposit and not blow it. I mean, I have I don't it's not I don't find that interesting, you know, but right. but I do find, you know, Sam Bankman Freed, you know, trying to explain how he used other people's four billion dollars as his personal piggy bank. Fi far more interesting than that. that that's a movie. That we yeah, can, that's we, a movie. We, that, that's a movie. There's no movie yeah. here. Yeah, that's a movie. a movie. This, exactly. this, this, current, this, this thing's no movie. Yeah. So, so anyway, so I want to let's let's get into the weeds if we could a little bit. Um, yeah. You know, sure. You're famous for the Sosnovian uh, method, um, which speaks to the you know looking in the mirror each morning, three and repeating to yourself three times, "I don't know anything. I don't know anything. I don't know anything." 
And then with the confidence of that morning philosophy, you're able to then assume that the market is efficient and that the price extremes reveal things and liquidity and that the data is in the actual behavior of the market, not in the information or not not in the news that you consume, shall we say. That's correct. And I... On the one hand, which sort of brings up to me the idea of a, a distinction between what I'll call news, which is any individual or institution that claims to tell you something, right? Whether it's a CNN or whether it's, you know, Joe Schmo on Twitter and everybody in between. And then you have another domain that I'm going to call information, which is I'm going to make a distinction between the word information and the word news. And information, I'm going to assume, is the collective intelligence of every securities owner, whether it's an option or a derivative or a bond or a stock, relative to a given enterprise. So the, the people, I'm talking about the actual title holders to assets related to the capital table of some entity, whether it's an S&P okay. index. Yeah, yeah, sure. Understood. But an owner, not an observer. Yes, Full understood. Stock. And that there's information that exists that's shared among everybody who's an owner. that is the basis upon which the efficient price that you speak of is revealed. Yes. Right? Like that, that, that the information, the efficient price only exists by virtue of the engagement of the actual title holders to the securities for the relevant asset or index. I, I, I'm right with you. Got it. I know you are. I know you are. And what you're saying is all of the news, which is not the information that's being used by the capital, the shareholders writ large, the stakeholders, I guess I'll call them. If anything, the news is a negative. It's a, there's a thousand reasons why the news is, is a negative or not, not helpful in any way. And I'm interested to distinct, at the same time, some of the things that are in the news are also in the information pool that are being used by the stakeholders. And then there's other things that are in the information pool being used as stakeholders that are not in the news pool. And I'm interested to understand what the key, what information do the stakeholders have that doesn't exist outside of the stakeholders that empowers them to be the best qualified to reveal the correct price? Um, so, so just so that I understand, to make sure that I, um, you're asking me, the stakeholder. So we're saying news doesn't matter, right? Yeah, news is right, irrelevant. Right. The market is efficient and it's liquid. Right. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Right. 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 But that price ultimately reveals some collective intelligence. Yes. Which is a reflection of the information that supports the decisions of the stakeholders in the cap table. Efficient market, efficient market right. hypothesis. So therefore, something is in that pool of information that is supporting their willingness to buy or sell a given security at a given price. Law, law of large numbers. The news is not what's in that information. Um, that is the, the that is correct to a certain extent. That is correct. Some yes. news leaks into the yeah, information. Of course, of course. And so my question to you is that the, for the non-news leakage content in the information base, what is it? For the, other, the information is not coming from the news. Is it, it's coming because I read the 10Q. It's running no. because I run pro forma financial models no. and assumptions. No, 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 it's no, no, coming no. because I'm friends no, with no, the CEO no, 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 because, golf and he tells me what's going on. No, no, it's all of that. It's all of the above. Why, it's everything. But what, right, exactly. But like, what are the ball, What are the large buckets of information? There, 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 there are none. It, it is the, the large buckets of information are greed and fear. So, so it, it's everybody rationalizes the, the 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 emotions between greed and fear somehow, and whatever they use to whatever they use for their own decision making or their own logic or rationale, whatever that is, it's a it's those factors and or forces. This is a very heavy conversation. But We're those. So happy. This is a, this is this. I, I know, but but for most people, they're saying, "What the f are these guys talking about?" Well, it's like that is the whole, the whole thing of EMH or the efficient market hypothesis 
and 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 the whole thing about efficient markets or just the efficient market theory is just that everything from the lowest levels from the greatest levels of fear to the to the to the greatest levels of greed let's call it okay everything in between whether it be news whether it be inside information whether it be you know material public information whether it be just you know the opinions of somebody on a soapbox or whatever it is all of that together however that drives you know the however that drives the money flow and however that drives the opinion that is what ultimately ends up deciding the perfect price that is how price is determined in an efficient marketplace that is the beauty of price the bigger the the more liquid the more players the more liquidity and and the more interest the more efficient the markets are it's just it essentially is it's the and accumulation of important of enough, large okay. numbers. Fair, fair. First of all, the quarterly reports or the annual reports of the profitability, customer acquisition, and overall costs are a big piece of information. To some people. To every stakeholder over time. With the key phrase being over time. Anyway, okay. that's not the know that. News is also a significant part of information. And so where I kind of, where the, the sort of the, um, the riddle, if you will, of reconciling the idea that news does not matter. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. It doesn't matter what the Fed does. It doesn't matter this, doesn't matter that. Randomized outcomes. And then news is relevance in the information base of the price. which contradicts the premise that news doesn't matter. And I agree with your, I agree, I've been around you long enough and I've seen enough to sort of witness the fact that, had, that, the, that anticipating price action on news is a fool's errand. You get the Fed decision ahead of time, would you know what to do, blah, 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 all the things. But at the same time, and I'm for sure the media apparatus is over-invested in the news as relevant, but I find it also extreme to suggest that the news is irrelevant to the information price, which I feel like has been is your position. That is my position. And you feel that you I feel like it's an extreme. I understand the instinct to, to marginalize it to zero mm -hmm. because it's over amplified 50 ways and and it's a shit and it's a lousy pipe of information anyway. But I find it hard to move it to zero in terms of its relevance. Okay. Then give it some it doesn't have to be zero. It can okay. be it can be 15 or 16 or less than or 20%. 5 or whatever. Yeah, it whatever, it's fine. It, it, at 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 16% You're willing to keep it in the mix in the base information that, of the efficient market theory. Assume that assume the way I would look at it is assume just look at a normal distribution curve and assume that up to 16% may play some relevance and 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 on the other side, 16% and less is completely worthless. And everything else falls in between somewhere. And the problem is that as a consumer, we or or in general, we have been that's not really fair in any other thing that we do in our lives. So in other words, there is some relevancy to information. The, the way I would the way I would look at it is I think you can also compare this all to chat GPT if you if you or or to any kind of artificial intelligence if the underlying that we're discussing can be um, uh, if the underlying we're discussing can be explained by AI then 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 news has some relevance to that topic or information has relevance to that topic if if whatever we're looking at cannot be explained by the computer or by machine learning then essentially there is no real relevance other than engagement and so when i when i think about markets if you ask 
If you ask, for example, ChatGPT, what what's this stock going to do, or what's this market going to do, or what you know what strategy should I use? It has no idea, and they'll say it has no idea because it has because markets are random and because it has no idea what's going to happen next. But if you say, hey, what's the best color paint for a car in Arizona? It'll have some kind of answer for you. Um, so I think that. It's the same thing with respect to news. If you're listening to news for the purpose, or financial news or whatever else it is, for the purpose of engagement and for the purpose of learning about stuff that's happening, you know, potentially crime in your neighborhood or um, or somebody's, you know, or something happening with the school district or something happening nationally, you know, somewhere else around in the world where, where um, you know, we're just learning about what's happening. I think that's all relevant and important. OK, but when we're talking about something where there's um, where there's a trade off between greed and fear and where there's money at stake, then that is that's absorbed by efficient market theory or by efficient market hypothesis, which basically says that everything's already built into that price. And then therefore, that price is totally efficient. There is no better yeah, judge. I understand. I know, I'm, I'm, well, I'm thinking about the event that, that that just sets the table for and a price adjustment based on new information. A price adjustment based on new information. Um, yeah, sure. I mean, there could be. Our sales were down. Software sales were up. Listen, there is always there, the, the banking crisis was of last week was caused by um, new information, non-public material, new information, you know. How is the marketplace supposed to know that there is a twenty billion dollar unrealized loss sitting on the books of you know X Y Z Bank, or how was anybody supposed to know at Credit Suisse that there was you know a forty five billion dollar unrealized loss sitting on the books? I mean that's the kind of thing when that stuff hits the market, you know that's different. But that's material non public information that be finally becomes made available, and it and that in itself is fairly rare. No, well, but quarterly earnings reflect a less dramatic version of that. Of course, of course, which is all part of the game. M&A activity reflects. Of course, the of course, which is all part of the game. You know, that's the beauty of that's what that's. Otherwise, we'd have no volatility whatsoever. We'd have no risk. Otherwise, you should get paid a flat, basically a flat, flat premium over risk free returns for investing in the stock market. Because all marginal return is a function of the volatility That's implied right. through enterprise or M and A. That's right. But news is not helpful to anticipate enterprise developments or M and A. <laughs> I mean, you know the 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 Fed announcement that just came out. You know, whatever it was, twenty minutes ago, um, it's one twenty-one right now. We, the Fed announcement came out at one o'clock, so twenty-one minutes ago, the Fed made an announcement. There was an eighty-eight percent chance, according to the CME Fed Watch tool, that there was an eighty-eight percent chance, based on all the information that was gathered out there, off of derivative pricing, that the Fed was going to make <coughs> um, no move other than a quarter of a point. They were exactly right. That is, it doesn't matter what anybody else says. It matters where something's trading. You know, it's always been that way. I, I just, I don't get, you know, listen, I get the, per, I get listening to people talk about stuff because it's fun. It's engaging, but that's where it ends. And so if you now live in the Sosnopian universe of, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, <laughs> the morning meditation. And you have compartmentalized news as a secondary or tertiary contributing component to efficient market theory that's being dealt with elsewhere. And otherwise, it is a pleasant way to spend some time. You are left with price extremes and volatility in excess of its averages. And you're left with your sentiment as it relates to event outcomes and events, FDA approvals, earnings, those sorts of things. Have you ever met, have you ever traded with someone who was capable of trading in a way that was that disciplined? Um, yes, but not, yes, but it's not the norm. And how unusual do you think it is? Very.
one in a hundred can do it over well, a year. I a mean, year. We've been going down this path now for eleven years, trying to move it into the mainstream. Um, but I would say that in general, it's incredibly difficult. Because human nature of course. Is, gets is seduced by the engagement. Of course. Of course. So, and it requires a level of humility of, to think, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, which is not human nature either. Of course. And there, there is also, I mean, there are going to be decisions that a person has to make. You know, success doesn't come without taking risk. And success doesn't come without making decisions, difficult decisions. Um, and so I don't think there is, um, I don't think there's a, like, you know, there's no book. Uh, Would you think I could go to AI and say scan for high liquidity, price extremes? I'd be all the, I mean, I mean, people must have been running robots at this thinking for years. They've been trying. Probably billions of dollars have been spent. I don't think it's ever, any of it's ever worked. And um, why do you think that is? Just because it's, you need, we've talked about this, you need inefficiency in order to arb out any kind of edge, you need there to be an efficiency. I do think AI is going to provide a huge uptick to the world of to the world of financial services because it is going to remove an incredible amount of bullshit from the rank and file in in financial services. AI is going to provide a really strong, the strongest foundation we've ever had for A, investor education, B, investor content, um, C, it, strategic content. They're diff it's different from investor content. And so you have investor education, strategic content, and, um, uh, and, 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 and investor content. And I think that, um, or just content in any way. And I think that is going to be a game changer um, in the world of finance because it's going to change, you know, like all the bullshit goes away. And so I think that that's that's going to be that's going to be a game changer. But what AI will stop short of doing is telling somebody what trade to make and what the market's going to do. I don't think it's it's never going to be capable ever. And why do you think that is? Again, there's What's there, the difference between a person and a robot when it comes to Well, a person can't do it either. So a person can't do it, a robot can't do it. Got it. Okay. You know, I mean, all the robot can tell you or the person is that if you stay in this for the next 50 years, it's you're going to get paid a premium over risk free rates. So there's going to be some return over risk free rates. But I don't know when that's going to be. So if you stay in long enough, it's probably going to pay off. You know, but but that doesn't turn anybody on in 2023. Because nobody has that kind of, you know, that's not the way we think. That's not, we don't have patience. But at the same that. time, the greatest liability to investing is a news driven investment strategy. I believe it is. Which is very, I think, common in the retail environment, especially. Well, it's a big business, though, Dylan. The Wall Street Journal's, the Wall Street Journal's worth billions, Bloomberg's worth billions, CNBC is worth billions. You know, these are billion dollar enterprises and this just that just scratches the the surface. And so when you think about it, it's much bigger than that. It's it's actually hundreds of billions when you think the amount that's paid to financial advisors and everybody else. Um, so and they're just reciting the same stuff. For, so for a news and analysis driven News analysis, handholding, whatever it else it is, teaching the whole deal. I mean, it's a it's a hundred, many but be, hundreds. And, and, and at the end of the day, you're making is just as good of a case for hyper engaged, you know, discipline that we're that just yeah, of course. That, at the same time, it's the same case for the lowest cost index fund in the world. Yeah, I mean, if if right, that, the if same that, argument for both outcomes. If that turns you on, sure. But I'm saying you're better off to be between a, 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 a you know a, 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 a two basis point index fund and then a split between that and a bunch of sosnoffery than you are to be somewhere in the middle. Yeah, I mean, listen, all all we can do is present all the choices. I'm not saying what's ultimately 
vest. You know, I used to think that there that you needed to be all in one way or all the other way. I mean, ultimately, it's going to come down to just, you know, what are the best choices for you that that, you know, life is short. Right. You've got the, the way I think we've always approached. I personally think we've approached life, financial lives wrong. Um, you know, it's it's really only a 30 some odd year period. You know, maybe it's 40 at the max. And so you're saying where money is relevant to a human. Yeah. Yeah. Kind because of you're a child and you're or you're old and you only yeah. have a chance to spend money around for a three to four decades. Yeah. I mean, basically from 22 to 62, you know, that's your that's your those are your risk years. And so from 22 to 62 is 40 years. And if you figure that, you know, whatever the average life is span is now, I don't know, 80 years, let's just say I don't really know. You know, it's basically half your life. You're half your life. You're in it and half your life. You're out of it. And so so it goes by fairly fast. So you don't have time to waste. And I think that that's what's so important about learning some of this methodology early is that you don't want to wait until you're, you know, a certain until you're in that last decade you're 50 or 55. Yeah. Yeah. You know, to find out what's relevant. You know, and and and, and the problem is, I, I, I think that most of the industry is relatively genuine. Like, I mean, I think if you talk to the RAs and the or the RIAs and all yeah, the all yeah, and I think if you talk to the like, you know, if you talked, if you sat down with, let's just say, as an example, like, you know, a Jim Cramer, or you know, Andrew Sorkin. Okay, if you sat down with those guys, they 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 they're not they're not con artists, you know, they're not they're not sitting there thinking that. I mean, they 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 believe 1000% in what they're delivering content wise and information wise and helping and wise relevance, irrelevance, yeah. engagement, the whole deal. So I think there's, you know, I, I think the, the challenges are really deep. Meaning I think we've only scratched the surface here at Tasty. I don't even know. Do you think that the market opportunity for a more engaged retail investor is immense? Yeah. Yeah. Like, I don't think like I I don't think Bloomberg sits around and one and says, wow, man, I got away with the biggest, you know, scam of the century to build, a net, you know, a, a, val, a net worth a of news 50. empire. What? A news empire. Yeah. Like, I don't think he's sitting there. Wow, man. You know, I got over on everybody. He's thinking, hey, you know what? I changed the world. I helped everybody, you know, like like, um, you know, Michael Bo Michael Bloomberg can sleep at night, even though he's got 50 billion dollars because he's saying to himself, hey, you know what? We really changed the world. And so and and, you know, and then there's others out there that are saying, well, I'm glad he got all these people engaged. But to me, I'm not sure if he really changed the world, you know, but that's just my opinion. Because the value of all that Bloomberg data relative to a given price is mismatched, in your opinion. Yes, it is. It solely it serves the purpose to rationalize and justify what is being done but not for the right reasons. So, so yes, it's basic. So like, so it's, it's the same way as the quarter. The point was at a ninety percent probability before the quarter it's, point. It's, a, it's an it's an anti. It's a it's a anti litigation tool among other things, and I I don't think that was ever the intention, you know. But but that's what it's become in but my the mind. The point is, it's not, it's not a leading indication of something that's coming. That's right. It's a reflection of something that already. That's right. Was, yeah. Is, and, and that and that's a big economic difference, right? Yes. If I'm giving, of course. If, I, if I'm giving you my front window versus my back window, you pay a bigger price for the front window. Of course, it's a validation. Back window. Sorry. Right. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. And I, I, I mean, personally, I think this is fascinating because nobody in the world ever had this discussion before. Like nobody's ever approached financial media and finance this way with this. I mean, at least I shouldn't say nobody because I don't know if that's fair because I don't know what other people have, you know, that many other people have done. But in all the all the people I've been around and all the time we, I've spent in this business, which is many decades. I mean, this is this approach is very unique to us. And and I I feel like this it's it's widely accepted. You know, like I, I, like it's not like some crazy, you know, it's not, not some crazy. We're not a bunch of Looney Tunes out here. Just, you know, it makes total sense to me. And I, 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 I agree with you. 
you know, listen, if like I said, it, it it's validated now by chat GPT and all these AI platforms, because, you know, if if you could if we can answer any other damn question, like even Bill Gates would have to say, hey, we can answer any question with that. So there must be there's something there. Some other force, like there's some other exactly. force of physics. Where exactly. Gravity must exist because otherwise there wouldn't be the bending of the space time continuum. That's right. Otherwise, we could answer the damn question. Right. And so therefore, there, so the inability to answer the damn question is sort of um, verification in its absence of the existence of a of a, of a secondary force, which is the uh, the efficient market theory. That's right. Uh, how else can how else? How, how else, else is it explained? You, how else could it be explained? I agree with you. I think yeah. that this could be like a paper from the University of Chicago, why AI proved the efficient market theory is correct. Yeah. I mean, it's it's going to be, I'm going to get 100 emails from professors after this to, today. But yes, um, and I'm I'm presenting it very simplistically, but but it, it does go to, um, you know, to the entire argument that we've been making for so long about, you know, just, you know, really what this business is all, all about. And it goes beyond just this business. It really speaks to opportunity in general, because I don't I think that people um, have a hard time identifying opportunities and then making decisions with respect to going after those opportunities, because it's not always normal. And I think that that is a huge challenge. And I think that this will this will move us, you know, again, it's the same thing. You could ask ChatGPT, should I make this trade? And the trade might be like, should I buy this Dunkin Donuts? Like they can't answer that question. It's what I like. No, I, I, I love where you're going here because it's it, you're, you're fine because they're finding the edge of of the robots inabilities. Yes. Which is there's something about life that still has magic, basically. Right. I mean, if you ask if you ask the robot, is this donut good for me? The robot's going to say no. It's going to kill you eventually. You know, sure. like there's nothing in this store in Dunkin Donuts that's actually good for me. But nothing. should I buy this Dunkin Donuts? I don't know. Can't tell you. But it might be like, well, you know, the school district, this, the tax base, this, the average homeowner, this. You know, they might give you the. It might give you a little like something. Don't count on it. <laughs> Don't count on it. I think you're going to be grossly disappointed. So, uh, so, but so then, what do you think dictates that? What What do you think dictates the the success or failure of the Dunkin' Donuts buyer? Because Warren Buffett would say the only thing that matters with investing in any company or anything is the people that you work with. He would say you can show me all the AI and all the sheets and all the stats till you're blue, blue in the brain. If it's a bad guy or gal, you're, you run away. And if it's a good guy or gal, you, you've got a better chance than most. Well, I mean, there's some there's a lot of truth to that, too. But I mean, that's, again, something you can't. Hey, I can't tell you that. That's it's, right. It's Tom Tom's not a good guy, a good guy to work with. That's right. No, it can't. On, on, should I buy a donut shop with Tom Sosnov as my partner? Right, right, right. That's what I'm saying. He can't tell you. But but I, I just think that we we have this. Um, you know, and and unfortunately, from a media um, concern, um, you know, things have gotten worse over the last decade. I mean, this has been probably the worst decade for media that I can ever remember. For sure. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's it's almost like um, and you can blame that on a lot of factors. You can blame it on, you know, on Trump. You can blame it on just a, a million other things. And when I say Trump only because just because ripping on the media all the time, eventually some people believe it. But you can blame it on a gazillion different things. And ultimately, you know, it's been a rough decade. And I'm not sure how they turn things around because it's well, been no, politicized. No, I think information is, that's what I, my whole point is news and information is actually dead as a premise. Yeah, but the bad thing about that is, you know, we're, we're, we've already proven that we're kind of a dumb society and we don't want to be any dumber. So we, we do need information that keeps people relevant, you know, otherwise Agreed. we get- I'm not saying it's not a problem. I'm just saying that the solution to acquiring actual information is not apparent to me right now. Exactly.
that's <laughs> that's that's what I'm saying, you know. And so, you know, well, the, tell you, man, we don't want to we don't want to push ourselves in a situation where we just get dumber. And so, you know, it's it's and it's very difficult to separate things like that. So. Um, that is a huge challenge, and that was the topic of today's discussion. Is just basically, you know, how do you separate that? How do you take, you know, how do you um, uh, bring media back to its great state, and at the same time understand that there's certain limitations that there that we have in media, especially financial media, which you know it's it's not going to tell you what to do tomorrow to make money. That's for sure. Doesn't know. It doesn't know. It can never know. It will never know. Just like just like the Fed number that doesn't matter what, you know, I mean, nobody knows what to do. The S&P has been knows what that, that for sure. No one knows what to do. Yeah. Which yeah. is why your whole thesis is here's what you do when you don't know what to do. Yeah. Like that's the tasty trade premise. Yeah. It's what you do when you don't know what to do. It's it's really fascinating. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Because you're like, here's a couple guideposts. Look for liquidity. If it's not liquid, why are we talking about it? Yeah, I but, mean, there, there is anyway, a beautiful... In the Marines, it'd be like a first principles conversation. Like, if you don't know what to do, you go back to first principles. Well, the beautiful thing about markets are that that um, because of that level of efficiency and because of the um, amount of liquidity and the access today is that... that you know, since you can do anything that you want to do, that's the special part. You know, in, in years past, you really couldn't. You know, opportunity is something that people see it all the time. And until you can really act on it, it's quite, you know, frustrating. I mean, that's why there was an explosion in gambling, because when you didn't have to go to Vegas anymore to place a bet, all of a sudden, you know, you could participate. But but betting world is notionally very small. You know, the, the financial world is is a thousand times bigger. Do you think that the trading world would be benefited by instead of giving people more choices and more sort of ease of access to more products? Do you think there would be a benefit to people, especially pe people that are at the beginning, to give them a limited number of available products that really allow them to experience sort of a neutral, a, a positive or a negative sentiment without overwhelming them with so many choices, just so they can understand what it means to not know and still be able to put on a position, basically. I will never be I will never be an advocate for less is more. I can't be. I, I, I more is more to me, not less is more. So, so as, as somebody that, um, no, I want more. No, you have to start with, you don't start a, 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 so a child on a tricycle with a GSXR 750 and spark it up and send them out into the, to the highway. You're like, this is how a bicycle works. I don't know what a GSRX 750 is, but um, the GSXR seven Jixer. It's a Jixer seven fifty. Nice bike. Mm. Okay, I don't know what that is, but whatever it is, I am um, no. I'm for you more. Want it, you're going to give everybody a GSXR seven fifty first day on town. If I if I could, yes. <laughs> that is dangerous, man. I don't care. I don't care. We won't even know which way to where to sit. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. But I, what, what underlies that sentiment? Genuinely, like your sort of overall sentiment. Of genuinely, I'm, I'm a free market person. I mean, I, I, I don't think there should be any, nobody should be limited, told what they can and can't do or what they can and can't trade or what they strategies they can and can't use, you know, you know, just based on how much money they have. Nobody. Do you believe children should be allowed to smoke cigarettes? Do I know? But no, do you think they should have a legal freedom to do so? No, I'm I don't. No, I don't. I'm, 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 I'm not comparing children smoking cigarettes to, you know, to, just like I don't think children should be able to go to war at 12 years old. No, if, if they want to. So, no, I don't believe any of that. But I think that they, I think any adult should be able to trade whatever they want to trade, assuming they have the money to trade it. Um. All right, so listen, we've got a couple minutes left. The uh, world is supposed to be in the Fed chairman's hands here. Um, 
Okay. Will Caesar let the people live or die? Or does he even have the power? Um, you know, so I'm going to go counter to what everybody else. I've been ripping on the Fed for years for lowering interest rates and being played by politicians and not being proactive and not being, in my opinion, um, at the table. They weren't at the table. They, they, they weren't at the table. They missed a lot of stuff. Um, I don't think they acted in it very. I don't think they did a really good job or a smart job over the last decade. Um, but I think the two times the Fed has been called to act um, or maybe two or three times in the last three years during the pandemic, you know, maybe meme stockish and and uh, and then obviously, you know, recently when they've been called to act in in the times of crisis, they've done well. And that's their job, in my opinion. When when there's a crisis, they need to step up. Well, what they do that was so good here. Um, they 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 said the right stuff. They said, you know, basically no depositors are going to lose any money, which was the right thing to say. And they helped to facilitate transfers of ownership. I mean, that's, you know, you provide stability. How can you argue that they didn't do the right thing when the stock market is way higher than it was when this whole thing fell apart? I mean, so they, they protected the equity marketplace they protected the bond marketplace and they protected people's deposits. And that's what their job is to do. So they did the right thing. You know, listen, so you're, you're giving you're going to give Powell a high five if you did that sort of thing. Is that what's going on here? I have read a lot of articles, people bitching about the Fed and how the Fed caused this problem. This is not a Fed problem. The Fed raised five, by 500, 600 basis points. So the over Fed created the problem by keeping rates at zero for 10 years. And that's, that's a whole different idiots. story. I totally agree. The Fed created the problem because when they should have raised rates or when they shouldn't have gone any lower, they went lower. And they and for did so long is ridiculous. Totally. One thousand percent agree with you. So that's why I would say when you blame if you want to blame the Fed, blame them on 10 years at zero, not on raising rates. Completely agree with that. But if you're going to talk about raising rates, no, I'm not going to blame them on that. And when you're going to talk about did they step up in when they needed to step up and say and do the right things? And the answer is yes, they are there in a time of crisis to provide support and integrity to the markets. That's what they did, you know, but they're not going to be a proactive entity that's necessarily going to do the right thing with rates. I mean, listen, they raised rates, say bonds are up a point. OK, this isn't rocket science. Notes are up big. Bonds are up big. Two years are up big, you know, which means rates are sharply lower today on the fact that the Fed raised rates. Nobody can explain that. Sure. It means the Fed's basically signaling they're at the end of their rate high rising cycle. Of course, but expect, everybody knew that already. A credit contraction will ensue as a result of the recent disruption in the banking sector, which will function as a synthetic rate hike. Everybody slowly. knew it already. It just happened. The, the marketplace. Then why the price move? Because in the last couple of days, they dropped bonds like four points. They had no choice but to raise them a quarter. Now they now they raise them a quarter. The rates the rates go the prices go back up. Rates go back down. They're all done. They knew it already. The price wouldn't be moving. They're all done, Dylan. This is a piece of cake. This was a layup. Oh yeah. So if I told you before that the we were going to raise rates a quarter today, would you have put on the right correct position? Well, I do have a bond position on. It's basically unchanged today it's unbelievable the bonds actually my, my position has not moved and the same thing with our note position um it just hasn't moved much but let's see we're 147 we're out of time here mr radigan good stuff as always pleasure sir we will see you next wednesday for another truth or skepticism thanks so much all right